See, I'm trying to leave the gamer subs visible in the background, but the mic blocks it. So just know that it's there. Hello everybody and welcome to the finale of my Predator Chronicles series that I started over three years ago. Two dozen episodes, approximately seven hours of content resulting in nearly 30 million views altogether. And I threw that all away to put it on the second channel. What a fucking idiot. Chris, why couldn't you have hired BetterHelp? Is it because like BetterHelp, you decided to be a fucking scam? I'm over it. I just haven't addressed it on camera as much as I'd like to. Disappointing, but all great things must come to an end. Today we are visiting the second half of the investigation in Murphy, Texas. Now I specifically left this portion as the finale. Because like many things in recent history that are to catch a predator related, it ends in tragedy. I will be ending the video on that somber note and discuss it from there. And let me just save you guys the time. Uh, oh, did you decide to have a pedal stash for the finale? Oh, were you gonna be one of the guys on the sting? You look like this guy who was on the show and this guy too. Everybody's already said the pedophile thing. Come on, brothers. And I guess since this is the finale. Oh, Nelly. Man, this hat. Looks like shit. Don't mess with Murphy. Now Murphy, Texas was interesting because some authority figures and even some locals did not want these people there. Not the predators, Dateline. Because Chris and company have always carried a bit of controversy with them everywhere they went. And ironically, this investigation made it a thousand times worse. Bad decisions, poor police work. And get this, by the end of it all, prosecutors did not pursue charges for any of the predators caught in that sting. Instead, NBC got sued for $105 million. So I guess let's just get into the episode and goof on these innocent men. Why don't you have a seat? These are the Predator Chronicles. Now it's very possible that I just haven't watched a To Catch a Predator segment in a while, but the introduction for this, the attention grabber if you will, is very reality show-esque. There's rock music blasting as they preface all the predators and they even try to draw you in with the district attorney who offs himself at the end. It's all very Logan Paulish, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Buck with the fuck up. Online he made a date with a girl posing as a 14 year old. Come on, come in, I have drinks, we have soda. And some Halloween candy? <laughs> but he appears to get spooked. Yeah, that laugh would have scared the shit out of me too. <laughs> Man, that 13 year old really sounded like quite the host. Come on, come in, I have drinks, we have soda. And some Halloween candy? <laughs> <laughs> but he appears to get spooked. Yeah, sorry, Popeyes just tweeted out that the chicken sandwich is back. I've been wanting to try it, so I, I, I'll, I'll be back in like an hour or something like that. Our first predator in line is Chris C1983. Are you scared to lose your virginity? Probably a little, I guess. Can I take it? I'll be gentle. Look at this bulky fucking earthworm. Nothing about this picture says gentle. <sighs> so how are you? Doing all right. Yeah? So you find that house okay? <laughs> yes, sir. I cannot believe that they let this creep get within a foot of her. What? What's your name? Chris. What are you doing here tonight, Chris? What are you doing here tonight, Chris? In this big old house with a teenager hiding in the back room, looking like a Russian trafficker. I think I'm the least suspicious here. He doesn't spend too much time with Chris, so he bolts until he realizes he's screwed. Ouch. He's sent over to be interrogated and he promises that nothing would have happened. Even if she showed up naked to the door, no chance. Says he would have just went into shock instead. I probably would have went into shock and fell over, honestly. What? I mean, like me, I've talked about it and talked about it and then seen breasts and just completely blush and just freeze up. I'll be honest, a lot of the times I see breasts, I freeze up too. And that's when you just need a jacket. Jacket. It's cold. You know, I missed making bad jokes in this series. What did y'all talk about doing? Having sex. Really? Yes, sir. What else did you talk about? You guys ever have gamer subs? Now this is incredible for all the wrong reasons. Imagine staring down the barrel of potential years in prison and every fuckery that comes along with it. And you later discover that you're getting off scot-free because of the amateurism behind your arrest. Now. 
Okay. Our next predator in line is Sunset Liquid. Online, he calls himself Sunset Liquid and talks. You look like a. You look like a failed magician. You look like a busboy going to his first audition. You look like a BuzzFeed reporter. You look like an innocent man. <laughs> he shows up to the house and the decoy gives him the usual spiel. Well, we got soda. I'm sure you're thirsty. Got soda and some Halloween candy and everything. Sit down. You got water? Um, no, I'm actually out. I drank it all today. I've got root beer and Coke. <laughs> you have no water? How ironic is this? We're trying to form a spark in Flint. You got water? Um, no, I'm actually out. I drank it all today. I've got root beer and Coke. <laughs> you drank it all? You fucking whale? That's not a fat joke. That's a whale joke. Whales take in a lot of water. So hold on to your hashtags and K-pop fan cams. Not today, dickheads. But a lot of you douchebags in the first part of the investigation were mentioning the decoy's weight. And I don't get how you guys just don't understand that everything's bigger in Texas. Now that was a fat joke, but I can make that joke because I'm fat. That's how it works, right? After a long drive, he needs to go to the bathroom. Pour yourself. You have a restroom I can use? Um, I don't know. I think the toilet's gone. I don't know. Do you want to sit down? I mean, I bet you're tired, right? No, do you have a restroom? Uh, no. Where do you piss? This is a fucking mansion. You're telling me all five bathrooms don't work? Is this supposed to lead to something kinky? Are you the toilet? Seriously though, you told me you drank all the water. Where is that all going? Did you scarf down the septic tank too? You got no Dasani, you got no toilet. The closest thing you got to water is pool. Well, why don't we just sit and talk first? I mean, we just got here. I'm gonna go outside for a little bit. No, no, sit down, come yeah. on. You said it was a long drive. Chris, why are you taking so long to come out? She's taking slugs right now. Other times you reveal yourself within seconds. I don't get what influences your timing. Are you purposely letting her crash and burn for the content? Interesting. Hey, sir. Yeah. I need to talk to you for a minute, please. Come on over here. Nothing up this sleeve. Nothing up this sleeve. Come on, guys. His magician days are behind him. He's got no top hat, no magic wand, no hair, which is also how he likes his girls, much like him. Innocent. Here you say that you want to perform oral sex on her. That's touching, by the way. I want to lick it, though. The thing about online chat is a lot of it's fantasious, too. You become a different person. So at this point, I've heard this excuse a few times, but I've never really addressed it. It's all fantasy. I would never do it. I'm just dipping my toe in La La Land, which... Okay, you're still bringing a minor into it one way or another. It's kind of like me planning to murder somebody, fantasizing about it, showing up to their house with a gun, and then deciding, you know what, I don't want to do this. Now, whether what I just did was illegal or not, something is wrong. Immediately throwing me back into society may not be the smartest choice. Police, on the ground. On the ground. On the ground. On the ground. And just like that, his dreams of being Cutco's top seller crumble before him. But as I've mentioned multiple times already, we ended up watching his charges disappear. And he's been going hard ever since. I actually bought this set off him last week. And just like the fine gentleman I'm covering today, please keep these away from your kids. Our next predator in line is Mighty Boy. Here we are back with debatably the best decoy actor on the show. Knowles asks the decoy to show his private parts on a webcam. At first, he asks to see his chest and stomach. Does this guy commit to his role or what? Why'd you send me that picture? That was pretty hot. None of that no bathroom shit. None of that me, my mommy, and my daddy shit. He does not break character. So what do you think we should do? Hmm, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you, what do you want to start? No matter. I genuinely believe he wants to fuck this guy, whose name is probably Ernest. Then he sends the decoy a picture of his own genitals. Oh my god, that's hot. Can I see yours, please? I showed you my dick, please respond. This guy doesn't show too much remorse, or really any at all. Really glad he was let back into society so soon. His defense incriminates him more than anything, because he says he meets people of all ages. He sends everybody his dick. And why did you come here tonight? Uh, I was gonna play pool, actually. With play pool? Yep. What kind of pool game would you use this for? <laughs> I wouldn't use that for a pool game. Why would you send it to someone who said they were a 13 year old boy? I send it to everybody. Imagine this guy with a Snapchat. Streaks? Tim, do you ever watch television? Yes. You ever watch Dateline NBC? Yes. So you know what's going on here? All right. How many times have you seen the program? A bunch. Do you like the show? Yeah, it's a pretty good show. Would you recommend it for the people watching at home? Probably. Do you know that I have 10 Emmys? No. 
Well, not a lot of people do. Not a lot of people do. He's read his rights and apparently is done talking. I'm just wait for oh! the lawyer. Your hairline looks like the Atari logo. Are you the last airbender? This guy just walks right in and somehow doesn't think Del was a hobo who just happened to wander in the open door before him. Hey, I don't see any red flags here. She's just a really cold 13 year old who's colorblind. Online using the screen name Earthshine66, the 40 year old chats with a decoy named Tori's Got a Story. The decoy says she's a 13 year old virgin. He tells her he has a picture of his genitals and says you wouldn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, we tried to keep it that way. Got some uh, leftover Halloween candy there for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Who are you here to see? Tori. Tori. And how old is Tori? Listen, I'm not trying to slander anybody, but this is the demographic drinking ninja juice. Meanwhile, this is the demographic drinking gamer subs. This video is sponsored by Gamer Subs because I just made that decision just now. I don't have some shitty ad read for you guys. I'm just partnered with Gamer Subs, so just look at it for like a couple seconds and appreciate it. They just redesigned their containers, released two new flavors, citrus lemonade and blue raz. And with that, blue raz has taken over as my favorite flavor. You guys saw that video with the Dobre brothers where they were being douchebags at their meet and greet? Look, these two guys, Drink G Fuel. This guy, Ninja Juice. This guy, Gamer Subs. Use code MrGG at checkout for 10% off. My link down below can take you there. And if you give it a shot and you fuck with it, tweet me a picture. Maybe I'll throw in some at the end of my videos or some shit. While he admits to sending the picture of his private parts, he insists he wasn't going to do anything sexual. I have a daughter that's 13. That never fails to make me feel uncomfortable. I too have a child the same age of the one I'm attempting to molest. Does that give me any brownie points? So did you, um... Why aren't you spending some time with your daughter? Because she's in Wisconsin. Oh, so she's having a worse time than you. I can make that joke. I lived in Wisconsin. How would you feel if up in Wisconsin, an adult man came to visit your 13-year-old daughter? When well, I'm no... looking something up and up. What? How is that your first response to that? Now, what if a 40-year-old met your 13-year-old daughter home alone in Wisconsin? Well, I'd hope he's honest or Aaron Rodgers. He decides to head out and he gives the cops some lip. Face down. Jesus Christ. Okay. I guess I'm under arrest, huh? You think? So I guess I'm under arrest, huh? So I guess I'm just gonna be on the sex offender list now, huh? So I guess I'm just gonna take it down to the police. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Chris went from having someone else enforce takedowns while he stood idly by to Having someone else enforce takedowns while he stood idly by. History repeats itself, ladies and gentlemen. This man has been charged with second and fourth degree sexual assault in the past. And here he is, reoffending. But I guess we gotta catch him a fourth time now. Nice one, guys. So we let a couple guys free, whatever. I'm sure none of them will reoffend. Fuck, one of them reoffended. Well, at least he's in prison now. I'm just glad none of them returned the jobs where they had a lot of contact with children. Fuck, one of them's a teacher. And was able to substitute at multiple schools because he technically didn't have a record. This investigation was a shit show, boys. And on top of that, unfortunately, no one else had an interview with Chris because Chris left the sting house. But before that, I guess the only person worth mentioning is the man known as Twink Toilet, which is a very literal name because he wants Twinks to excrete waste on him. And here's his defense for being there. You cannot believe I did this. Why not? My best friend's mom is dying of cancer. That's not a real excuse for it, but I wasn't in my right mind. So what did the oncologist say? They said she's stage four. I'm really sorry, man. I know it's, uh, it's so hard for you. Bro, not bad dog. So I guess we can talk about Lewis Conrad now. There is so much information on this and at the same time, so little. I'm not gonna be able to tell you everything in this video, but let me explain to the best of my knowledge what happened. Lewis was an assistant district attorney in Terrell, Texas, and he was one of the men to chat up one of the decoys from Perverted Justice. After multiple background checks, chatting, and even phone calls, PJ determined that yes, this was without a doubt the assistant district attorney from Terrell, Texas. However, he never showed up to the house. 
even after he said he would. And usually, when a potential predator does not show up, he is still arrested, because you don't need to show up to break the law when soliciting a minor. But for Lewis, they kick things into hyperdrive to arrest him in his home. Now PJ will tell you it was because Lewis had suddenly stopped chatting with the decoy at one point, and then they noticed he deleted his MySpace page. So they figured he was starting to get rid of evidence, so they wanted to get to him before he wiped everything clean. However, there was missing and contradicting information when that MySpace page was later brought up. So they left the sting house and made their way to his home and Chris was there bright and early. They were stalking Comrade's house the entire morning to speak to him the second he left, but he never did. Chris and company were working closely with Murphy's chief of police as well as one of his lieutenants. They also seemed to be very pushy with the process, people later claiming that their actions and rash decisions were influenced by the cameras. Apparently, it was said that the chief told several officers that he hoped Dateline would put Murphy on the map, and it definitely did. So they rushed an arrest and search warrant that had errors all over it because a sleep-deprived officer wrote them up to have them ready that morning. And after they were signed off by a judge, they had the green light to act. They decided to contact Terrell's local police department to get involved. And after Lewis did not answer the door multiple times, they called an attack team to force their way in. And after several time passed and plenty of deliberation, the attack team came in through a slide door and saw Lewis at the end of the hallway beginning to put his hands up. But they also noticed something shiny in his hand. His final words were something along the lines of, I don't want to hurt anybody. And he turned the pistol on himself. NBC was later sued by Lewis's sister for $105 million, and NBC originally said her case had no merit, but once a judge allowed the case to be heard by a jury, NBC settled out of court with her for an undisclosed amount. And there's a lot more to this story that I am leaving out. It will take fucking forever if I try and tell you everything. I think if you want the most information, you can read this piece from Esquire that I've linked below. It's an awfully long read, but it breaks it down piece by piece. And although To Catch a Predator did not end immediately immediately after this situation, it was said to be one of the bigger reasons why the show was later canceled. Some people looked at this situation and said good riddance, another pedophile dealt with. Other people looked at the situation and blamed PJ, Chris, NBC, and or the police in charge for this man's death. Authority figures in Texas did not support the actions being taken during this scenario. It all came off as a plot for ratings. It all came off as a plan for the spotlight, the big catch. And I'll never know 100% of the story, but after reading all I could on this topic, I have to agree. The decisions made by these people that were most likely influenced by not just the law itself led to this guy offing himself. Now, am I gonna show deep sympathy because a potential predator offed himself? No, obviously this is something easy to brush off. He unfortunately took his own life, but in life, he was saying shit like this to underage children. And had he not turned the gun on himself, most people would be saying, lock him up and throw away the key, which is a death sentence of its own. It's just something that didn't need to happen. I agree that some people there had different intentions when proceeding with this operation. I'm curious what you guys think. I'm curious if you change your mind after reading that piece from Esquire. The whole situation was just fucked up. But regardless of all of that, I still stand by my opinion that at the end of the day, To Catch a Predator did more good then it did bad, significantly. I just realized I look like a train operator. I don't even look like a cop. It is a series that is still relevant to this day, not only in meme culture, but just in general. To Catch a Predator is notorious. And regardless of my feelings towards Chris at this point, the show would not have been the same without him. So to keep it short and sweet, here's to the finale. These are the Predator Chronicles. And that is actually gonna be the end of not only this episode, but the series. I know you're gonna ask, if Chris comes out with more investigations, will I cover them? I don't want to, but if it's, you know, a content gold mine, I'll throw it on the second channel along with every other episode, but only if it is a content gold mine. If it's just some fucking mid, I'm good. That's also if it ever comes out anyways. All the Predator Chronicle episodes have been moved to my second channel, Mr. G Dubs, the one you are watching right now. They are in a playlist for your viewing pleasure. I've also kind of thought about this, if you care, kind of reacting to the episodes in the series because I have not rewatched any episode in at least like two years. So I don't remember a lot of the things I did. You guys let me know if you want me to make that a thing. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe to my second channel because I have more content coming your way. And I don't have anything else to shout out on the second channel, so Gamersubs, I want you to tag Gamersubs on Twitter and tell them to make me my own shaker cup because we deserve it. It's two fucking GGs. How do I not have my own shaker cup? Gamersubs, 10% off, code Mr. GG, all, all one word. As always, I am your host, Mr. GG, and I am out.
Next level.